scattered showers, a high of 12 degrees. LBC Travel, I'm Joanne Webb. Delays on the M25 clockwise to Junction 15 at the M4. It's because a car was on fire earlier. One lane remains closed. Anti-clockwise is all open but very slow from Junction 17 at Maple Cross because of onlookers. Delays on the M1 southbound to Junction 9 at Redbourne. There are delays of about 15 minutes and that's because a car's broken down and one lane is closed. And also delays on the M20 eastbound at Junction 3 at the M26. A car's broken down here as well. In North Holt, there are delays on the A312 going northbound to the target roundabout. That's because of the roadworks. And on the underground, there are still severe delays on the central line. This is LBC. Why would you not? Ferrari now 0345 6060 LBC Welcome to Do- Ferrari at breakfast on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. It's 10 minutes before 8. Now, with the possible exception of Israel, the United Kingdom stands out as an absolute success in the way the vaccine vaccination program has been handled from the British scientists who developed it through to the National Health Service who administered it, the British military who helped it get there, and an army of volunteers who stood out in the rain, the sleet, and I understand even in the snow to make sure. So could it possibly get any better? Well, unbelievably, the government thinks it can. 
And I'm about to be joined by a man who's going to tell us how. I speak of Vaccines Minister Nadim Zahawi, who joins me now. And we're about to spend money on a vaccines task force at Porton Down to achieve even greater success. Good morning, Minister. Good morning, Nick. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Tell me where the money's going, what you hope it will achieve. Yeah, absolutely. So the uh, Public Health England um, uh, Porton Down team, uh, have been uh, doing an incredible job. They analyse about 700 blood samples every week. We put in about 20 million uh, last year to scale that up to 1,500 uh, blood samples analysed a week. This further, just shy of 30 million, is to take the scale from that 700 all the way up to 3,000 samples By when? every week by January of next year. Now, what do you why is that, that in, in language yeah. that, that I can understand, you're far uh, more experienced in this field than I, but language that I can get, what does that actually mean, Minister? What does that provide for? Right, what it will provide for is a capacity that allows us to very rapidly test which vaccine variant, because we've now done lots of deals we've announced, CureVac, we announced with 50 million uh, doses, which is a messenger RNA vaccine, like the Pfizer vaccine, like the Moderna vaccine. Um, it'll allow us to very rapidly analyze which vaccine variant will work against any virus variant that may escape. At the moment, the good news is the current vaccinations are working against the dominant variant in the UK, which is the Kent variant. Um, the Novavax vaccine looks like it will work really well against the South African and the Kent variant. Pfizer is working well against uh, all the dominant variants. Oxford AstraZeneca team are working on a vaccine variant. We're working with them on that. We've got the Scottish vaccine, as I call it, the Valneva vaccine. It's actually a French company, but the manufacturing capabilities in Scotland, which is a whole inactivated virus that will make up the vaccine. Again, we can then shape that to any variant. So what Port and Down will give us is the ability to always stay ahead of the virus. The virus will will get will become desperate to try and survive. How does it do that? It tries to infect those people who are not protected, which is why when you get the invitation, please come forward and get your jab. Um, I'm there but, next week for my boost, I assure you, Minister. I can oh, think of you as I roll up my phenomenal. sleeve. <laughs> phenomenal. Phenomenal. Uh, so what, what, what this is about is future-proofing the vaccination programme. Um, so in future years, we will be able to, like with the flu vaccination programme, ah move to a sort of endemic state with this uh, uh, virus well, and do it. That a, leads a, me on to the front page program. of one of the newspapers that I would imagine you or your colleagues have had sight of. Over 50s to be offered third jab before winter. Uh, Covid bo booster, I'm sorry, with flu vaccine this autumn. That is the projection. Can, Minister, can you tell me, is that a reality? So the clinical decision has not been made. That will be made by Chris Whitty and his fellow chief medical officers in Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland. My job my team's job is, is twofold. One, we've got to give them as many options as possible in terms of vaccines. So we've got the Novavax vaccine, the, the Valneva vaccine, the AstraZeneca variant, the Pfizer, we've just bought 60 million doses of. And the other job is to make sure the NHS leadership team is ready with a deployment strategy so we can deploy at scale in the autumn if necessary beginning in september whenever they tell us that they need to boost the most vulnerable if you remember okay. we started vaccinating the most vulnerable on the 8th of december with pfizer so the residents of care homes the over 80s over 75s over 70s and those who are clinically vulnerable and then 4th of january with astrazeneca oxford when the clinicians say we need to go i've got to give them the options available to do that now jonathan van tam is conducting what is called a cov boost study okay. to see which booster jab will work best so if, if you had astrazeneca astrazeneca is it better to boost you with a pfizer or novavax or valneva um or uh, another astrazeneca that so you can mix and match potentially so that, that that's separate so we're doing a mix and match study at the moment no, we don't know for sure yet i see the, uh, c correct. The cov boost is to look at which booster single dose will give you more protection. Right. The durability of that I've protection, the the okay. the antibodies <laughs> and T cells that you need. Minister, just on the subject of jabs, and I hope you heard the introduction because I have hailed it as a phenomenal success, something for which everybody involved can be rightly proud. The NHS, the military, and possibly even the odd politician should be quite pleased with themselves as well. But if you look at the numbers from yesterday, Minister, eighty thousand odd first jabs. A little under 130 uh, boosters. Um, I know there's always lumps and bumps, but have you got any hurdles to worry about here, Minister? Uh, 
So that was obviously the bank holiday Monday. So the, the, the data is always the day before. Yeah. Uh, you'll see the, the data for today. Um, obviously, uh, I, I won't preempt the uh, Can you and I agree it's going to be healthier figures? It's going to be healthier figures, and it'll continue uh, uh, to uh, obviously become okay. healthier. We're, we're, on, we're averaging at the moment. The NHS team is averaging about 10 million doses a month. Incredible. Um, nine out of 10 45-year-olds have had the protection of one dose now. So um, we will continue. Uh, uh, really, the limitation is the, is the vaccine supply. Yeah. That is the, the limiting factor. We can deploy. We got to 27 jabs a second was our record. Right, right. Um, just on the subject, um, Novavax is, I believe, under review right now. I think you, you are part of the trialling system or process. Uh, is there any update where, when we know whether this is can be released, Minister? I, I was part of the trial. Um, uh, I was obviously then, uh, when I had my, my invitation to get my jab, I got the AstraZeneca jab. You are released from the trial and you are told... Ah what you've had and they gave me the placebo at the time but i was one of the trial you're absolutely it's right you're so healthy so, it's because you're so healthy you're well, such a picture I'm, of health i'm grateful to you yeah. well, I, I still i still took my my astrazeneca oxford jab when i was invited my Indeed. first dose i'm waiting for my second dose uh, but um novavax is with the regulators the, uh, the independent regulator the mhra are reviewing the data how long would that take uh, it is though? looking good in oh. the sense that it works against both the current dominant virus which is the kent virus and the south african virus and it will be manufactured in teesside it'll be oh, filled fantastic. and finished at barnard castle so uh, uh it, but, it but is when might it vaccine. be green lit it's up to the regulator I, I obviously they're independent of, of i i can't um um you, know, you, push you, you can't send an email saying come on chaps and chap S's, you know, let's get it moving. Get you have to work into a whole load of hot water. Oh, well, well, I don't depend want, I don't on the government. All right, okay. <laughs> Let me ask you a couple of final points. You will be aware it was hopefully a day of uh, of reprieve for some people in care homes yesterday, and that they were able to be visited and even perhaps taken to a garden or for a walk or whatever. But you may not be aware uh, that sadly a lot of care homes are saying they don't have the facility, they don't have the staff, they have concerns over insurance, the whole thing. Um, currently, it's advisory from the government. Should it be mandatory? Do you think, Minister? Well, I think my message to care homes is, um, and they've been, you know, on the whole, really brilliant at, at, at working with us, with the uh, social care minister, uh, Helen Waitley, uh, is, you know, we want people to have the best possible outcome. You know, the residents of care homes um, were prioritised for the vaccination programme. This is the time to try and implement this. Um, I would much but rather. They're running up against uh, a brick wall or a bolted door, of course, Minister. Well, Helen is is working very hard to make to make sure that we engage with them. Um, I've been uh, part of conducting a a, a big um, telephone exercise with the care home managers to uh, make sure we understand how we can increase the uptake of the vaccine amongst staff as well. And they've been very proactive in working with us on that. And my message to them is: please, please, you know, where you can work with us to make sure uh, those residents really do um, get the, the, the sort of the freedoms they deserve. But you can understand the frustration from some of my listeners. They're desperate to see Grandad or whoever it might be. Totally, and the care home, totally. possibly for all the right reasons, is saying, no, I'm just wondering whether we can put a little bit more effort into this minister. Well, I can assure you that, that, that Helen is absolutely focused on this right. because uh, you know, we, we all know in the department, because we, you know, we live it every day throughout right. this pandemic, how important it is that those families are able to visit, that they get the, 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 all the positive outcomes of this incredible vaccination program. I'm not going to repeat all the you know, okay. stuff you said at the beginning, but it is that, that the nation coming together is that, that if the virus challenged liberal democracies, because the only way we could suppress it is to withdraw freedoms with the non-pharmaceutical intervention, the dreaded NPIs, the vaccine program has played to the DNA of the peoples of these aisles because we're good at organising and it is this Dunkirk spirit, there's thousands of flotillas Absolutely. coming together. The volunteers are military, the NHS family, doctors, nurses, GPs, pharmacists. Incredible. It is. Absolutely incredible. I'm so proud. I sometimes, you know, I feel like an imposter. I stand on the shoulders of the real heroes. Well, uh, you've not done badly yourself. I mean, if we, if, <laughs> if we search long it, and hard enough, we might be able to give it's you the applaud it. <laughs> It's been a privilege. I, I'm, you know, this country's given my family everything. You know, we we fled Saddam Hussein back in 1978, 
and to have been afforded this opportunity by the Prime Minister to do this, uh, you know, I get I get quite emotional about this sometimes. Mm. But just to put something back to to to, to I think you put more than something back. Family, I think you put quite a lot back, Mr. Harley. Uh, for, uh, lastly, you served as Children's Minister. You may be aware of a joint letter from trades unions to your colleague Gavin Williamson. Just to remind everybody he's the Education Secretary, saying that face masks or screens or whatever it should be should stay with pupils until at least June the twenty first. Do you agree? So face masks for secondary school uh, pupils uh, are yes. staying. That's really important. Uh, there is a review as part of the work that the Cabinet Office is conducting into, obviously, social distancing, which will report before the 21st of June. And, I, and they're doing some really important evidence uh, analysis on this. Um, but I, I, mean, I, I think it's the right thing to do to follow the evidence on this. All right. Always good speaking to you. Thank you for your time, Minister. Nadim Zahawi, Vaccines Minister, appearing here on LBC, where at two minutes after eight, news is next with Simon Conway. On your radio, on Global Player, and Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation, this is LBC. From Global's newsroom at 8 o'clock, ministers say a new investment in testing facilities will future-proof the UK against new variants of COVID-19. The Port and Down site is to be expanded so scientists can fast-track their analysis of the effectiveness of vaccines. Our reporter Emma Corr is at the site in Wiltshire. The government is investing £29 million into the site here to double the capacity for testing variant blood samples. Vaccines are then trialled on those to measure the levels of antibodies produced, the immune response.